Hey, what is going up, guys? I have no intro, so this is um, just me talking about Japan stuff, living in Japan, and all that. So for this time, I thought I'm gonna do something different. I thought about, it's not like top 10 or top five things, it's just a few things that are good and bad in Japan. I thought that's uh, kind of an interesting subject, so let's jump right in. First of all, let's talk about transportation. Obviously, Tokyo is a big, big city. City, well, it's a metropolis. It's, it's actually, I think it's one of the biggest cities and the most crowded cities in the whole world. And that can get to you. So the bad side of it, when it comes to transportation, is there are too many people. Seriously, too many people. You must have heard about the morning rush. You must have heard about the afternoon rush. The last trains are are hell. Like, uh, well, it depends on the train and uh, the company, but usually it's like the last trains are like at 1 a.m. or something like that. That train, every line is a mess because everyone wants to get on the last train to get home because they've been out having nomikais and all that. Understandable. So there are certain times when it can get really annoying and there are really too many people and uh, it depends on the line again and the station. Obviously Shinjuku, hell. Uh, Shinagawa, hell. Uh, all the bigger stations are just stupid. And yeah, there are times when uh, the, Eki, uh, the Ekikakari in the the station master, the the yeah, the station workers push people on the train. They don't. I, I haven't seen it that much. I mean, that's a very extreme case. But there are times when uh, people do shove. Well, shove. They they do push themselves uh, on the train. And uh, it gets really, really crowded. Like, you would say that, well, no, it's like not one people can fit on that train anymore and uh, 10 more actually put themselves on the train. It's it's actually quite amazing <laughs> uh, how, how much uh, a human being can, uh, you know... <laughs> pull its body and its belongings to like to take up the least amount of space it's uh, yeah it's it's not healthy and uh it's definitely very dangerous because when when then the train breaks then it's like the whole crowd just folds so that's uh, <laughs> that's actually not good and then yeah if there are too many people there obviously as i said the train has to make an emergency stop uh or whatever, or you just, you know, the tracks, when when you, when you change tracks on the train, there's less kind of some humping going on, then, yeah, it can be pretty bad when it's a packed train. But if you can avoid going, uh, well, you using public transportation during these hours, like the morning rush, then you should be fine. Like, I do it, I, I actually, well, my contract is... Where I work at, uh, they don't really. Uh, well, now I have like a fixed term, like I have to be in the office uh, at eight a.m. But they didn't really mind before that, so I don't. It's actually good for me because uh, if I take the train around, well, before seven thirty ish, then uh, usually there are less people. It's still a lot of people, but it's less, and it's. It's not like you cannot breathe. And well, imagine, like I am a tall guy. I'm 192. That's um, that's like six two six three. And um, yeah, that um, like I'm tall. I can breathe. But imagine like a little Japanese girl, very fragile, uh, 150, 160. I mean, I I keep seeing like big OG son sweating in shirts surrounded and and, the, and and they surround this poor little girl and she cannot breathe she 
Ugh, with the sweat and all that. Ugh. Like, yeah, I can imagine. It's it's worse for Japanese people, especially if you're not if you're not tall enough. And uh, yeah, it just it just worse to be slim in Japan. Like, uh, uh, imagine you having like over hundred kilos, and then uh, you get on those trains and you get pushed, and it's not a good time. But anyways, let's talk about the good good side of it. It's uh it's actually pretty good transportation quality wise. Uh they're rare they are rarely late and if they are it's usually some passenger injury, uh someone commit well if they say passenger injury it's somebody usually committed suicide. And then the train stops and they have to, you know, inspect it, call the police, yada 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 to to to, to make sure it's not a murder uh, or well, to make sure if it's just to verify what happened. Um, that can be a problem. It's very rarely a problem of um, the train itself. So they they do keep the trains pretty well maintained, which is great. So the service is really good. Yeah. On like on the weekends and outside like busy hours, it can can like the trains can be late a few minutes but it's not that much of a problem like it's 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 like you're not busy you're 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 outside your busy hours just yeah whatever <laughs> uh i kind of get this feeling in japan that when it's uh your busy hours is like you're working you're doing business then you're very busy but outside of it nobody cares nobody cares even the strictest um Japanese businessman, if if he or she, businessman or businesswoman, he, if if he or she is uh, spending some off time, they just don't care. They just don't. Um, and it's also cheap. Like um, I don't mind spending money. Like me, where I come from, and well, in Europe, uh, you can get stingy with transportation because it's bad quality, and you'll be like, well, why should I pay for this? It's actually crap, and the train was delayed for 10 minutes. Uh, why am I supposed to pay for this? It's not convenient. It's not nice. It's not clean. In Japan, you don't mind. And uh, it's actually not that expensive. Like, um, for example, last night I ran to Disneyland, which is just outside the Tokyo the, um not district, but the Tokyo, well, district, uh, how you say it, pre pre um, Tokyo Prefecture. So it's it's actually already in Chiba Ken, Chiba Prefecture, which is kind of like northeast-ish from Tokyo Prefecture. It's basically Chiba. If, if you know what Chiba is, you, you know what I'm talking about. And if you know where Disneyland is, in well, it's not in Tokyo, actually, it's outside Tokyo at that point. So near Tokyo, uh, so that's that's it's already a different prefecture. Uh, anyways, I digress. Uh, it cost me five, well, it's five hundred something um, uh, yen to my to my home, which is actually quite far away. I would say that's like twenty kilometers away. So that's basically five dollars to travel twenty kilometers. I changed trains like three times only. It's well, it's it's basically from Disneyland, and yeah, and I don't live in the uh, in the central part of the city, so yeah, I mean five dollars, and it was like I had seats. Uh, uh, it's it's clean, air conditioning, um, facilities. There are toilets at every station. I mean, if you if you if you think about all that. Like, look, there are trash cans, there are um, uh, be beverage selling machines. If you think about that, in other countries, you don't even have that. You don't even have a toilet. Like, uh, it's it's cheap and it's good. Why wouldn't you pay for it? And, well, you have to pay for it. Some people don't. <laughs> I've seen some people just uh, walking straight past the gates, just, you know, touching a fake card to the to the card reader. And actually, the... The station workers don't even they just whatever they don't have time they don't they just, they just don't 
then don't deal with it because it's a really small percentage. Some people, what they do is they uh, buy the cheapest ticket, they get on the train, and then when they get to their destination, if it's like a far one, then uh, they're like, oh, well, I, I, I lost my ticket. And then they ask you, where did you get on? Well, I just got on, like, I don't know, two stations before this one. And then you pay only that much. So there are ways to get past it. And uh, one extreme, one more extreme situation which I I have been experiencing, for example, at Shinagawa and Akihabara, and I'm pretty sure other stations do this as well, there is kind of like a shortcut, like, uh, I can't remember which, I think it's Yurakcho. So, for example, at Akihabara, if you... Uh, if you've been to Akihabara, you know that uh, JR station is the easiest to find. So you get to the JR station, but you realize, oh, well, I have to take Yurakcho. And then all the signs point to, well, you have to go over and, and under, and you, you basically go through the JR station. So you actually have to uh, check in. Well, not, not check in. You, have to, you actually have to key in or card in. So you have to actually get inside the JR Akihabara station and then when you get to the other side you have to leave the station premises so you have to card out again but then you get an error obviously and then you have to go to the station uh, workers office and then uh, you have to explain like yeah I, I got lost um, hey uh, can you fix this and they usually they do it at other stations if this happens, yeah. But for Akihabara and Shinagawa, I think that's because a lot of people do this because they don't want to go around because it takes more time. So they actually charge you some money. I think it's uh it's one dollar something. But they 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 charge you for getting in and out of the JR station. So if you well if you go back and you get out the same gate that you came in then that's fine. They they don't ta charge you. But if you if you basically use the JR station as a shortcut, they charge you a dollar or two, which is understandable. But at the same time, it's uh, I guess it's because yeah, it's a lot of people used it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it was just um, a countermeasure. And Shinagawa as well, I can't explain which way it is, but I think if you go from one side of Shinagawa station to the other, they're also going to charge you one or two dollars because a lot of people just take it because it's, it's faster. All right, next topic. Eccentric people is what I've written here. Uh, yeah, uh, there are a lot of eccentric people. So if you want... To be on your own, you can do it very easily. People won't bother you. People, if yeah, if you don't talk to people, they're not going to talk to you, and that's really strange for me because uh, again, in Europe, people just approach you, uh, uh, bums on the street asking you for money. Nobody ever gives a sh here. Nope. But especially well, I'm a obviously I'm a gaijin male nobody cares if i was female probably i would be approached by a few japanese guys trying to number me uh and if i was a japanese girl then <laughs> yeah then that's uh, an even bigger number situation but as a gaijin male or even a japanese male nobody gives a shit I mean, seriously, nobody. If you if you don't want to be social, you just you don't even have to wear sunglasses. Although some some people do still, just just plug your earphones in. Like uh, yeah, just just pretend you're listening to music. Uh, have a hat. Uh, dress casually or conservatively uh, put a song list on but you put some song list on but you don't even have to like people just don't talk to you and that's a good thing if you if you want to be on your own but then again it's not hard to get some attention like uh, there are so many attention whores and so many people that that yearn for attention 
because of this because if you don't if you don't put the effort in it nobody's gonna talk to you nobody's gonna care and again i have to say some people enjoy this i enjoy this i have days when i don't want to talk to anybody i don't want to see anybody i don't care and especially in tokyo you can get really eccentric because there's so many people outside all the freaking time if it's good weather if it's bad weather all the time so yeah well, that was a short one but i think it's a very important one like uh, yeah it's a big city a lot of people but a lot of lonely people but it's your choice like there are meetups uh, you can um, you can meet people pretty easily if you want to there's uh if it's especially if you're a guy you can just go to a golden guy uh, there are speakeasy bars um yeah just um, just don't be weird <laughs> Don't go numb on the street approaching some random girls. Although it does work. It does work a lot. If you look good, like you have to take care of yourself. And then if you if you approach a girl, like hey, uh just just ask her for her line. Just just ask her, line Arimaska. That's it. And if she likes you, she'll give it to you. If not, you just go to the next one. That's <laughs> that's how Nampa works in Shinjuku at least. Next stop, food, very important. So I think that's for everyone who came to Japan and tasted real Japanese food for the first time. They thought like, wow, this this flavor is great. It's so much different than my country or wherever I've been to. It's so much better. Wow. And that's true. Yeah, they're using different uh, spices, different flavors. Uh, the food is very healthy. Uh, usually, and if you are okay with eating Japanese food, then it can be very cheap. You can get a fish teishoku. Well, it's basically saba teishoku. It's a, saba is a kind of fish. Teishoku is a set meal, so it's a fish set meal for uh, six hundred fifty. So that's yeah, let's say that's six dollars ish. Um, you can get uh, Japanese curry for the same amount. So it's 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 way below it's I would say it's six to seven dollars you can get a good meal Japanese food not an amazing meal but a good meal a good healthy meal uh, at a traditional Japanese shop now you can also get it for cheaper if you go to Kombini you can get it for a couple of dollars less but shittier quality Kombini food I gotta tell you is not good for you but it's a way of living. Like, for, uh, well, now it's six years ago. Six years ago, when I've been here as, you know, on an internship for half a year, I. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting thing because I didn't have much money. I didn't get. Well, I got some salary from being an internee, but. Or be, be, being an intern, but. Uh, it was. Uh, well, I can tell you the exact number. I don't care. It's 135 thousand yen per month from that i paid 60 how was it i think it was uh, all in all i think seventy thousand for a share house with all the utilities and everything and it was uh it's 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 quite central share house i mean i heard people paying more for share houses uh in more centered areas i used to live in mejiro which is just next to Takanobaba and the uh, Ikebukuro. So it wasn't bad to play seventy thousand. I think it was, yeah, it was something. I think it was sixty-eight thousand with utilities and everything. But you had to uh, pay for your washing and um, uh, and the shower. It was a uh, hundred yen for ten minutes of shower. So technically, it's uh, I think it was seventy thousand, and the rest. I just spent on uh, on eating, and uh, sixty thousand yen can be pretty rough, pretty rough, right? And uh, obviously, you want to eat. Um, you're working, uh, you're studying, you're a gaijin, so you eat more. Uh, especially if you're working out, then well, if you think about it, and and then you didn't do anything, right? That's just food. They're just food. 
that's just food and then comes transportation which is cheap but still costs you money so all in all i used to live in company food or on company food and it's tasty you can do it for a while but i lost weight i lost 10 kilos (laughs) right now i'm doing fine for myself i'm still not like i'm not fat but i'm not slim well i'm i'm slimmer than if i was um I'm, I feel more healthy than, than 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 if I was working in like other European countries because of the food and I'm eating normal food. But yeah, community food you can live on it for extended periods of time, but then uh, your medical bill is going to cost you a lot more money once you actually get to the point where you have the grades. So you can buy really shitty food for very cheap. You can buy good food for normal price, which is well, you can buy good Japanese food for normal price, or you can buy really good food for, um, I'd say, yeah, you can buy really good Japanese-ish food for $10, or you can buy Western food, or not Western, but like Kaigai food, like uh, overseas food, and that that's, that's Thai, that's... Um, that's hamburgers, that's Indian curry, and all that. If you stick with Japanese food, you can get good quality food for cheap, for for a, for a very moderate price. But obviously, you cannot eat freaking um, Japanese food all the time. So sometimes you have to hop in and get and, and grab a pizza or a burger, and you go out with friends. You just <laughs> you just can't say no. Like if you if you're living like a monk's life. Or a well, a hermit's life, yeah, you can, but obviously, it it depends on your lifestyle. If you don't want to meet people, if you're being eccentric, sure, definitely you can survive. But everyone needs friends, and uh, you go out with friends, it 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 will cost you. You want to eat some Korean food, yeah, it's not gonna be too expensive, but. Be prepared to spend 2,000 yen per person if you go out and eat some something quote-unquote nice. So yeah, food can be an issue, but if you, if you like Japanese food every day, then it's fine. And if you like company food and you can deal with it, again, why not? Um, one extreme incident that happened lately was um, in Osaka, uh, we had a quite big earthquake, or a couple of earthquakes, and then a flood, and then and I think another earthquake, and then a typhoon. So Osaka got hit pretty badly this year, 2018, uh, beginning of summer-ish. And uh, I have a few friends in Osaka uh, working here, they're from Osaka, so their families are in Osaka. And uh, they told me that the food shortage was actually pretty bad cause, because it was such a catastrophic um, uh, time. Well, yeah, because they had such catastrophic times. Everyone just brought, just just bought up all the food. They went to the store and they bought everything they could. And there was actually pretty bad food shortage because obviously everyone wants to keep themselves alive so they went to the shop and they bought everything that they had everything rice tea water everything everything they could buy and it actually created food shortage and that was pretty bad and another thing that i actually realized yesterday is that i wanted to order tea online because i usually do that i can't be bothered to go to the shop and and buy it and you know carry it home uh, and and it's actually cheaper to buy online and you can get um, free shipping or free delivery that is uh, once you reach like $50, $70 depending on the shop but they actually have kind of an embargo or a kind of limit Uh, there was already a limit to online ordering on some products so they just say well you can only order seven of these per person well actually per order but i'm pretty sure it's per person uh yeah and that's pretty i mean you can get around that by placing different orders if you really wanted to i don't know how that works because i'm uh 
I'm stingy and I don't want to pay for delivery, especially if I'm ordering in, in bulk. But yeah, uh, and um, I've been trying to order tea online and everywhere I get either it's sold out or you can only order one case per order. Or, well, they actually say per person, but I think it's pretty much it. So, I mean, you, you can put a different name in there. Who the, who the hell cares? But yeah, and that is probably because because we have a very hot summer. And uh, everyone's been buying tea like madman, right? It's hot, you drink more, you piss more, you drink more. That's just the way of life. And the companies know that if they don't limit it, maybe it's a governmental rule as well, I'm not sure, but they know that if they don't limit it, then people will buy up all the shit and resell it for more. And, uh, yeah. And then, uh, obviously, the companies cannot keep that... Uh, like they, 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 they have this worked out in a way that it's profitable for them. For them to buy more stuff or to have them produce more stuff, that's not, not that's not profitable for them. Even at this point, even that they could actually sell more, they're not producing, they're not keeping more in their storehouses because it's just not it's not profitable for them. They would have to invest more uh, storage space if it's something that has to be frozen or kept cold, then that's more power for them. It's more of a hassle, more deliveries. So they actually just limit the amount you can buy. You can go to the shop and buy all you want. There's no limitation on that. But they had to put an embargo on online ordering. And that's only my theory. And I think that makes sense. Because then uh, people would just, you know, buy all the stuff that have money, invest in it. And then uh, I actually see on Rakuten some people just sell uh, rare products. Just simple rare products like Mugicha for like double the price. Like, what the fuck? Because they can, right? It's business. Life is business. Food, like uh, one of my um, ex-classmates used to say that uh, he's going to become a chef because there are always going to be hungry people. And yeah, he's right. He's right. It's a very simple way of thinking, but he's right. Okay. So next topic, English is bad. Yeah. And what I'm what I was trying to say with that is um uh Japanese people as much like uh, there are a lot of Japanese people who can speak really good English and there are a lot of Japanese people who can speak sufficient English. But still coming here being able to speak fluent English is a, you you have a lot of opportunities, right? Uh, not every industry is like that. I work in uh, IT engineering, and uh, there are again a lot of Japanese people who can speak pretty good English. Pretty good. They speak better English than I do speak Japanese, so definitely that's a plus. But there's a lot of work if you can speak English. And some Japanese, but you don't need to. I know a lot of guys who who, who live here and they don't speak any any Japanese, maybe just small ones like Sodane or Yatta or stuff, stuff like that. And, and they are successful. But if you really want to uh, increase your chances, and your career, and you really want to make do or not just get by, you have to learn Japanese. I just got my N2, my JLPT N2, this uh, Japanese language proficiency test. N2 is obviously it's not the best one, it's the it's the fluent, um, it's, it's, the, it's the upper intermediate level of Japanese. With N2, like they won't consider anything below N2. So N3 and uh, N4 and 5, forget about it. They're just a waste of your time, waste of your money, waste of everything, waste of your energy. If you want to have a certification, do N2. N1, even for some Japanese people, that's hard. N2 and N and then one a lot of Chinese people because obviously it's kanji. The only real 
um, challenge between N2 and N1, because I, I did try N1 as well, I failed. N1 has a lot of kanji. There's just a lot of kanji and more difficult, like, yeah, more difficult topics that you have to read. And obviously, if you don't care about a certain topic, like, I don't know, medical equipment, like, I, I know some words that relate to that topic, but it's not like I know all, it's, it's not, not like I'm reading a newspaper articles about the newest uh, uh, me medical equipment or, me uh, or machines that are used there. Or if you're not an engineer, and even if I'm an engineer and I use uh, engineering Japanese language every day, there are certain topics where I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I kind of know what that kanji means, but I'm not sure, or I'm not sure how to pronounce it, or I just don't have no idea. I never seen it. So yeah, that can be quite challenging, but I think with N2, I keep seeing a lot of job offers asking for N2 at least. If you have N2, you're good. And Japanese people like, they, they love certificates. That's why I did TOEIC, otherwise I wouldn't have cared about TOEIC, because I already have... Uh, uh, an English language proficiency test, let's say. Uh, but obviously they don't care about it. They want to wake because this is America. <laughs> yes, Japan is America. It's, it's uh, Japan America. <laughs> Anyways, so you have to learn some Japanese to be successful, but having good language, uh, well, having good English skills can get you far because even still, even today, Japanese people cannot speak fluent English or good enough English, right? Um, I have two more topics. Expensive rentals, cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I've been talking about this, basically. So this is just a short one. I've been talking about this in my previous... Let's call this podcasts, I guess. Uh, rents. Uh, so expensive rentals. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's getting more and more expensive to rent out uh, a flat, an apartment, a house, whatever. Uh, in Tokyo, um, cars are really expensive as well. Although the cars are thing. like you can use public transportation, I don't see a reason why you need cars here in Tokyo because um, you, you can just use public transportation. And I know it's not that reliable, and I know it's not nice to smell other OG Sun's um, armpit. Uh, and I can see why most Japanese people want a car because it's a car. Like it's it's basically everywhere. You, you have a car that's a status symbol. All right. Well, it's kind of expensive to buy a car. I would rather put my money into buying an apartment, which is a good segue, actually very expensive. Like it's super expensive. I keep seeing like one DK, so that's one diner kitchen, maybe 30 to 35 uh, square meters. Uh, somewhere around the outskirts of the central of of um well it's 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 basically uptown is what I'm trying to say. So uptown one DK thirty to thirty five uh square meters hundred uh, how much is it? It's uh uh it's man uh so it's like it's a hundred sixty million I've, yeah I think I've seen something like a hundred sixty uh it's one two yeah it's hundred sixty million is it that's uh man I always have to convert. I, even though I've been learning Japanese for a long time and I've been living here, having everything in ten thousands just—it's super confusing. Yeah, it's hundred and sixty million yen. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of freaking money for one DK, right? And the list goes on and on. You can buy something for six fifty million. Uh, some one LDK, some 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 nicer ones in the middle of town. Uh, you can rent a tower mansion for 
uh, for half a million yen per month or even more. And there are a lot of constructions. Everybody is uh, into construction right now because it just... You can rent out for so much money. Like if you own land, build something on it, rent it out, have other people pay you the money. <laughs> like, yeah, it's such a good business. Uh, and I've also included here a relatively wide spect spectrum of entertainment. That's true. Um, in Japan, especially in Tokyo, you can do whatever you want. Anywhere, and it well, not anywhere and anytime, but if you want to go to a, I don't know, onsen, you can go to an onsen. You want to go to a ninja restaurant, you can go to a ninja restaurant. You can go to a robot restaurant. You can, like, there is everything everywhere that you need. Like, there are companies 24 7. If you want to drink a beer at 3 a.m. in the morning, you just go down to the company and buy it. That's it. If you, obviously, if you want to eat ramen, but, but well, that's actually a good example because there are shops that are open until 3 a.m. or also almost 24 7. Like, almost like where, where I live, there's a ramen shop at the station and it's, it's open until 3 a.m. in the morning. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? So, yeah, you can, you can go to game centers, uh, Obviously, Pachinko is open until late, if you're into that crap. Uh, yeah, there's so many things you can do in Tokyo, and you can get overwhelmed. But I think Tokyo is the only town I, be I, I, I lived in that had this type of feeling that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. You can get to it, and it doesn't cost you serious amounts of money. Right. Obviously, transportation. Yeah. Like, don't think about some impossible stuff. Like, oh my, well, I, I want to eat steak, and it's it's, it's six a.m. in the morning. I want to eat steak with mashed potatoes, and yeah, I want I want to go and uh, get myself sopped up by uh, by a young um, Japanese schoolgirl. <laughs> that actually you can get as well. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to say any crazy stuff that aren't available in Japan. Like, I get surprised every time, like, I talk to my friends and stuff, and they be like, oh, you heard about this? I'm like, no, wow, that's okay. Because there's a market for it. There's demand. If there's demand, then, uh, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Obviously not impossible thing like uh again it's it's hard to name impossible things here in, in tokyo but yeah you, you can you can uh, skydive if you want you can you can do multiple things you just have to find where it is because uh there's a lot of stuff and our last topic and i, I could i could talk about this for days but i'm just i'm just getting tired now so the last topic good safety but there are some crazy stuff happening so yeah um, there is very good safety, public safety. Um, they actually, uh, I just had this like the other day. Uh, well, I think it's only Meguroku because uh, I didn't hear about this anywhere else. Actually, at like 1 p.m., uh, they have this uh, loudspeakers. I'm, I'm not sure how to call these. Yeah, loudspeakers. Uh, outside on the streets and um, the ward government well the well I would say yeah it's, it's really the di district go government can use those to no notify uh, the people and what they do during these hot summer days at 1 p.m. actually not 1 a.m. 1 p.m. Uh, they tell you to well it's you know it's very hot and you should uh, probably spend your day in a cool, well, chilly place and drink a lot of water. And that's great. I mean, that's a nice thing. Uh, then again, at like 5 p.m., uh, most of the districts have a kind of melody that tells the kids to go home because it's 5 p.m. and they shouldn't be out after 5 p.m. Although, 
it's more like a traditional thing at this point. Uh, they they really seem to take care of care, care about the people. Like they have a lot of uh, cultural uh, conventions, festivals. Um, uh, it's good to live in Japan. If you want, you can do a lot of things. Uh, but I was what I was trying to say here is that uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened though. Like uh, you don't get approached on the street, but as I said before, if you're a moderately sexy schoolgirl, Japanese possibly, then you will get um, not even numbered, but you will get molested by drunk people. If you go to work in the morning at some well in certain in certain places and if you're female and if you look just a little bit sexy, then uh yeah, drunk people will try to sexually harass you in a way that they might touch your butt. Uh in the train that's a common thing that you get uh, sexually harassed. Um because it's a packed train and as you can see, oh, everything comes together at this point. That, uh, yeah, a pack train. Oops, I touched your butt. Oops, I, I'm sorry. That wasn't my my intention. You know, and some people need that. Some people just just need that because <laughs> they don't have anything else in their lives, right? I've heard some pretty crazy stories. Like I might have already. I don't think I told this story on the podcast quote-unquote podcast but one of my colleagues a girl relatively young 24 years old Japanese cute uh, she's walking home one night uh, she finished late and uh, another like they call it salaryman <laughs> Sa- salaryman it's like uh, just some guy who works in office suit everything approached her uh, approached her it was kind of dim lit but he approached her to like just to ask for um directions to the station and uh, the 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 guy was japanese and kind of like youngish like below 30 and um yeah, he just asked for directions to the station, and uh, my friend was like, "Yeah, well, you know, it's um, you just go straight over there." And then, as she started to explain, she realized the guy had his dick out. He was wearing suits and everything, but he had his dick out. <laughs> and you could argue that, yeah, maybe he was drunk and maybe he was peeing and he left his dick out. But who the fuck leaves his? His, his dick out after pay after being even if you're very drunk, and my my colleague was pretty sure that the guy wasn't drunk, he just left his dick out because strange. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I keep hearing lots of crazy stories like uh, one of my other foreigner uh, female friends. Uh, she she she. She just walking home, and then guys just try to talk to her very aggressively. Like, come on, let's have a drink, let's go. Um, it's gonna be fun. Come on, and they actually follow her for a long time. She actually had to move from her old apartment because uh, she had a stalker, and stalking is a real thing here. So I'm really glad that I'm. Uh, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say white. Uh, that I'm a European uh, male in Tokyo because. I don't get crap all. I'm being left alone. Yeah, I get some stares sometimes from older Japanese OG sound like uh, get the f- out of my country and stuff, but they don't say it. I just get stares. And I'm not sure if it's a stare about me being Caucasian or me being young or me just wearing casual clothes where the guys, uh, while well, Japanese guys have to wear suits and stuff or they just interested. I'm not sure, but uh, in summary, pros and cons, I would say the biggest pro and the biggest con is there are a lot of people, and that's good because you have a lot of chances of getting to meet new people and uh, occupying yourself with stuff, because I know I used to work uh, work and live on the countryside in England, and that was freaking shit, that was the dullest couple of years of my life 
Seriously. That was crap. And then the, <laughs> the con is again a lot of people. And uh, it can get really hard to breathe. And not literally, but you know what I mean. It can get, you, you can feel really claustrophobic in your small little apartment that you pay a lot of money for. You're spending all your salary on your rent and food and you don't have money to go out. And when you go out, there's a lot of people and you go out with your friends uh, you, on, a, on a busy Friday night or busy Saturday night and you can't find a place to, you know, sit down with your friends and you sit down and there are people smoking all around the place and, you know, everyone's super loud and uh, you sit in these small chairs and then you realize what the fuck I'm doing here and then you pay a lot of money for for crap isakaya food and then you realize what the heck am I doing in Tokyo and yeah you have to find your peace of mind and it took me around one and a half years I'm gonna sneeze uh, my bad so it took me <laughs> and this is true it took me one and a half years to get used to this amount of people. This, like, you have to adjust your lifestyle and then you'll be fine. And then you have to just let it go. Just let it go. There are a lot of people, there are things you can do, like uh, avoid rush hours, uh, live kind of the, uh, uptown, but not too far from your workplace. You can live in downtown, but it will cost you, and uh, you can find really calm places, but again, that will cost you. <sighs> all in all, uh, if you're interested in living in Japan, uh, I have some uh, previous episodes where I explain some stuff, uh, like uh, how much money it will cost you to live here and stuff, but... For now, that's it. I don't know if I'm ever going to make another episode of this unless I find some good topic, but for now, thanks for, well, how much was this, an hour, yeah, kind of, almost an hour, thanks for listening, uh, check out my previous ones, because they actually contain some interesting information, this one was like just, this is, these, these uh, topics have been on my mind, and I wanted to share my thoughts on these, but yeah, um, have a good one, and, uh, Stay safe. If you want to come to Tokyo, by all means. If you want to live here, think about it twice. Bye-bye.